And welcome to a special edition of Geek Town Radio. I'm your host, Dave, and I have with me... Grey, and... Hello. <laughs> I have with me... To infinity and beyond! Matt, how are you doing? I'm good. How's everybody doing? I'm, I'm doing all right. Thank you very much. Uh, the reason we've got two hosts on and the reason it is a special edition this week is because we are launching... The Geek Town Awards. <laughs> it's the Geek Town Awards launch podcast. We're actually launching it slightly earlier than we would usually do because we'd usually run this like right through from uh, 1st of December through to the end of January. We're actually going to move the dates slightly because I'm away on holiday towards the end of December. Um, so uh, going to run it just a little bit earlier. But I also think that's quite nice because it means the results will come out in the week between Christmas and New Year. So uh, you'll get the results a little bit earlier, but the competition will run a little bit earlier as well. So uh, as ever, there is a huge prize, which is full of all sorts of geeky bits and pieces. There's a massive prize box. And there's a smaller runner-up prize as well. It's the same thing we do every single year. So if you want to know what you might win this year, the Geek Town Awards massive prize giveaway box this year includes, but is not limited to... Various clothing, including T-shirts from Marvel's Venom, Stark Industries, and Friday the 13th, along with some Beavis and Butthead socks. DVDs and Blu-rays such as Deadpool, Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, and Spider-Man No Way Home. Cuddly toys, including a plushy Pickle Rick from Rick and Morty and a plushy alien facehugger. Various figurines from franchises such as Game of Thrones, Westworld, The Walking Dead, Sons of Anarchy, Marvel, Stranger Things, Sherlock, Ghostbusters, and more. Books, including a Torchwood novel and a Haynes Zombie Survival Guide. Games, including Torchwood playing cards and a Walking Dead card game. Drinking stuff, such as an Avengers mug and a Walking Dead hit flask gift set. And lastly, an Amazon Fire HD tablet and an Amazon Fire stick. That's the prize list for this year. If you want to enter to be in with the chance of winning that box of huge box of prizes or the runner up prize, you need to go to geektown.co.uk forward slash awards. All you have to do is uh, fill out the form on there, pick whatever was your favorite TV show, video game. There are options if you're not gamers to say, I'm not a gamer as well, so don't let that worry you. Uh, films and also the most anticipated stuff coming in 2024 out of the various lists. But uh, at the moment, we have quite long lists in each of the categories. So what we usually do at this point uh, what we're going to do now is go through the shows which are on the list and see if we could trim them down a little bit for starters and also give our thoughts on some of the uh, the shows that are put on the list so um moving straight into it we're going to start with best new drama and there was a lot of good stuff around this year a first thing that came to mind when i was compiling the list at the top of the list is the last of us of course which landed <laughs> on sky Atlantic. I mean, what a phenomenal show that was. Uh, then we've got The Night Agent on Netflix, Citadel on Prime Video, Silo on Apple TV, Poker Face on Sky Max, Gen V on Prime Video, Boiling Point on BBC One, Interview with the Vampire on BBC Two and iPlayer. Culprits on Disney Plus, Monarch Legacy of Monsters on Apple TV, Blue Lights on BBC One, The Diplomat on Netflix, and Will Trent as well. So I don't just compile these lists for myself. Matt and Gray also have involvement on this. So uh, they've also got the option to be able to sort of suggest things to be removed from the list as well. Um, Gray, we'll come to you first because it was you that added a few things to this list. So just talk through some of the things that you added. Yes. So um, what an amazing list, can I just say, like considering we came off the back of uh, the COVID pandemic where there was a lot of like holdups in filming, we have got a really spoilt list of new dramas there on any average day having like Poker Face, The Night agent the last of us um and you know all in the same list is is incredible but three that i added on blue lights 
was just an incredibly gritty BBC One drama set in Northern Ireland, um, and it's a police drama, and it just came out of nowhere, really. There wasn't a lot of fanfare, but it was a really gripping um, and really emotional and really tense. I really, well, I keep saying the word really, it was a really um, passionate watch in terms of, like, I needed to get through it. Um, uh, the Diplomat, which was on Netflix, I think surprised us all. There'd yes. been a one called The Diplomat a couple of years earlier. That had been would not by not, not <laughs> even a couple of years earlier. It was literally <laughs> earlier that year there was that one year, that looked an alibi. Yeah, um, <laughs> I, I was <laughs> nowhere near as good a show. Yeah. No, not at all. And this, again, was just really good. And it's sort of, uh, it was also based in the UK for some of it as well, which I found really enjoyable. And people seem to get really hooked to it. Um, and then just a bit of an outsider. I do not think this will win, but for a different approach to the procedural, uh, Will Trent appeared on Disney Plus in our screens um, earlier this year. And it was just a really different take on the procedural. And I just thought that deserved uh, to to be in with a, the show for this one as well. But what an amazing list. Yeah. The Diplomat's one of those things. It's, it's a sort of interesting show that is very much balancing that almost same with kind of something like Succession is it, well, it's technically a drama. There's an awful lot of comedy in it. Um, it it's, yeah. it's, it's really, really straggling those two worlds. Uh, if you like Succession, by the way, uh, go and watch The Diplomat because I, I think that's a phenomenal show. Um, definitely worth going to, to check out. Matt, for you, I, I'm guessing there's only really one thing that's going to come out of this list yeah certainly uh, aside from obviously the last of us um i did really enjoy gen v i remember when i first heard like oh they're doing a boys spin-off like already because it had only had i think it had only had two seasons when they first and it, the yeah. show um and i covered the boys weekly and it was like a interesting show to 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 do there was things i did and didn't like and then gen v kind of came along and honestly it wasn't until because we'd heard like the, about the premise and stuff but it wasn't until that first trailer came out and I was like oh okay this is a bit more of what we're doing we had a better picture of it and I did struggle with it a bit in the first half of the season but then the second half of the season I, I it just took off like a rocket and I thoroughly enjoyed that second half more um and uh, it might be a controversial opinion one that I've given on my um Gen V podcast I like it more than the boys um <laughs> yeah I think, it, I think it's doing just more interesting things than than the uh, main show. Uh, obviously, Last of Us was was spectacular, but uh, Gen V was the more sort of surprising one to me. Of course, um, I don't think I've seen a lot else that's on this on this list. Um, yeah, there was some Netflix stuff that I didn't really quite go towards, but um, yeah, for me, it'd be between Gen V and Last of Us. Which one do I think is going to win? I think Last of Us possibly will. I'd be I, a bit surprised if it didn't. Um, yeah. I mean, it, it, was I, it was interesting as well, though, because with how popular and liked The Boys is, I didn't quite see the same fanfare for Gen V, so I don't know if that will quite be in that same sort of way. Um, so we'll see. Yeah, it will be an interesting one when it comes to the voting. I, I mean, Last of Us, I, I think, should win hands down. Um mm. Uh, Silo, I also thought the Apple TV show was a phenomenal bit of drama and, and Poker Face as well is also a, a brilliant, brilliant TV show. I don't know whether Interview with the Vampire is is in with a shout purely, you know, partly because it's on BBC and, you know, everybody has access to it. But then it's the type of show that if you're into that sort of thing, you've probably got quite a few streaming services as well. So I, I don't know whether that will help it particularly. There's so much good stuff on here. Uh, one th interesting thing is that you marked for removal was Citadel. Gray, why? <laughs> I did. <laughs> because it was fun, but I think that's about where it was. I just think that if you're putting it up against some of these others, and this is like, I haven't seen them all. I just want to put my hands up and say, I haven't seen them all, but listening and reading the reviews, a lot of these had much better critical reviews and better quality than Citadel. And I think if you were trying to compare Citadel as best new drama to something like The Last of Us, which... I agree with you both. I think The Last of Us is is probably going to be the winner here. I just didn't think it stood up against it. And I haven't seen Monarch Legacy of Monsters. I don't know if either of you can comment on that one. I nearly put it next to there, but I was putting it next to there and I've never actually seen it. So Yeah, I mean, that's the thing with Monarch Legacy of Monsters. It hasn't completed. I mean, it's only had a couple of episodes go out at the moment. So there is an argument for taking that out here um, hmm. as well. 
uh, you know, because we try to sort of keep the lists down a little bit and we have added some new shows. I'm not sure about Will Trent. I kind of dropped off that little bit, but I do get what you're saying regarding that in terms of it being somewhat different when it comes to that sort of procedural thing. So I I don't know, maybe mm. maybe we'll leave yeah. it in. It said, it said all that Amazon one that you watched, wasn't it, David? Yes. Um, the, the, more, the guy from Game of Thrones? Is that yes. the same show I'm thinking of? Okay. Yeah. yeah. I never started that up, so. It's fun. Um, it is, it is a fun it show. It's expensive as well. Yeah, it's a fun, very expensive show, and they've got multiple sp- spin-offs but i don't know whether it's landed quite as well as no. they hoped it would um <laughs> so i you know because it what's quite interesting is they they built it as a franchise so they launched the english language version of the show and then they launched one that is in the same connected universe but was based in italy i want to say it was italy or spain or france or something and then they were doing other ones as well so not like remakes of it they were things set within the same world but in local languages and different, their own different stories, which I thought was kind of an interesting idea. Uh, I don't know how well it's worked for them, but uh, yeah, I mean, I I still rather enjoyed it. Uh, I, and I do agree, compared to a lot of the other stuff, I don't think it's necessarily got as much of the drama in there as some of the others have. But that's what's on the list at the moment. That might be a slightly different list once it once it goes up, because as I say, we <laughs> we do kind of tend to trim them down a little bit. So uh, yeah, that that's what we've kind of put forward in the long list so far for best new drama, best returning drama. We've got uh, Slow Horses, which actually had two seasons in the eligibility period because they turned the third season round. They filmed them back to back, so uh, season two and season three of slow horses on apple tv vikings valhalla season two servant season four outer banks season three jack ryan season four lincoln lawyer season two foundation season two departure season three billions season seven morning show season three time season two for all mankind season four lazarus project season two the crown season six unforgettable season five and then uh 911 and 911 lone star you added in matt as well i sort of veered away from putting procedurals in there which is why i didn't put the because i kind of feel if you're going to put like things like 911 in there you sort of then got to do the law and orders and the Chicago's. And I mean, we have had a procedural category in the past and I, I ended up taking it out. So I'm not sure 911 and 911 Lone Star are going to make the cut because although they've been good, they're more procedurals rather than dramas. And, and well, I know there is a crossover with that. I, that was sort of my reasoning for not putting it in because if you put those in, you then sort of, well, you sort of have to add in some of the other procedural stuff as well. And then you end up with a, like I say, you can end up with a whole category for that. Matt, any other thoughts on these? Yeah, I think but both the 911 shows were excellent. I do think the Lone Star is is becoming if not already on par with the original show i think it had probably the season yeah. had just gone for a while a few months ago it was probably on par with the uh, original show but they're both pretty much as good as each other in in my eyes now uh, they did mm-hmm. some really really strong work in in this season um i get what you mean but they just because i was looking through like my reviews list and stuff and there was a that i sort of remembered that they came out this year uh servant which is also in the uh category later as well um Servant season four was was interesting because it was absolutely incredible up until the last episode. When you had three episodes left, two of those sort of resolved all the like big drama and big build up and big mystery. And then the finale kind of the finale wasn't bad. And I still think about that finale now, but it kind of just happened. But there wasn't really any sort of drama work to be finished because that had all kind of concluded. So I remember like going through Reddit and stuff and everyone's like, what the hell is going to happen in the last episode? And it kind of just happened. <laughs> yeah. So uh, it, it was still really, really good uh, season, though. Um, 
what's some other stuff in there? Jack Ryan season four, I've annoyingly not gotten to yet. Uh, Foundation season two was just something else. Uh, that's just, I feel like almost Foundation could be in its own entire category. Yeah, like, well, the, way, yeah. the way it tells its 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 story is just uh, incredibly unique, but that just makes the show really good. Morning Show season three was really good. Um, and there's a few others on here that, that kind of stand out. Um, the actual best one I think in here is probably Foundation season two. Uh, mm-hmm. Obviously I didn't add that, but you put that in already. Um, that's what I think should win this because it just, I don't know, there's just something particular about the way Foundation tells its story that yeah. really nothing else on TV does. So Yeah. Uh, Gray, what about you? Because you added one and also Mark two for removal as well. So. <laughs> Yeah, I I wanted to, I haven't seen a lot of these. So this is a one where the two for removal, I was just going off what I heard uh, about their initial critical reviews based on what they're going up against. You've got some really strong ones there. I personally, in if I was to look at the top ones there, I think it's a three horse race between slow horses, ironically having a horse in the title. <laughs> um, Unforgotten, which is the Sanjeev Bhaskar who came back after losing Nicola Walker in season four. An incredible, incredible return. for When you lose your lead, you really worry. But uh, yes. I think it was done really well by ITV. And I would actually put the Lazarus Project. I've, I've started season two very recently, but I am just hooked again. It's sci-fi, Dave. I'm enjoying I sci-fi. I know. <laughs> and, and I, so I would genuinely, like, I, I haven't seen a lot of the others. I've looked at scanned reviews and critical reviews before I put... Uh, for, for listeners, I suggested we remove the departure in the crown just because I thought their initial launches weren't getting the hits that they need. But I, I, you know, if Slow Horses doesn't rank highly, then I will question some of our listeners. <laughs> yes, I mean, I, I'm, I'm kind of with you on maybe I should take Departure out um, because it is a bit more procedurally possibly than than straight drama. The Crown, I, I actually finished that yesterday. Uh, the well, the the first half of the sixth season because the second half doesn't come out until late December. But I'm not sure why it's got the amount of criticism that it got I mean I think they've just carried on doing what they've been doing from the beginning I think the problem has been that because it's getting so close to recent memory for a lot of the viewers that they're realizing how much liberty that uh, that they taken with the story whereas in the earlier histories they obviously took liberties with scenes and stuff and got away with it because there was nobody really to question it and and i think as we've become more into recent history i think people have got more aware of the liberties with it they've taken with certain story beats and stuff. So I think that's all it is. I don't think the show itself has, has got any worse or any better. I don't think I, you know, I think it's been a solid drama throughout. And I think the first half of season six, which deals with Diana, they've done as sensitively as they probably can with that. Uh, You know, I I don't think anybody comes across particularly well in terms of, you know, the Royal family or the Fayed family. You know, I don't think they particularly criticize one side or, or, or another unfairly I, I it tells a, a compelling interesting reasonably well-rounded story of those tragic events i think it, it did a decent job of it but i'm happy to leave that in there that in, in for me though I, foundation i've season two i thought was phenomenal um mm-hmm. billion season seven i thought they rounded that off brilliantly and they did a really good job with that i thought that, that was that was a great show slow horses though for me is is so certainly up there and I think probably takes the top right now I absolutely adore the Lazarus Project the second season I take my hat off to Joe Barton because I mean I interviewed him uh, the, the interview is up on the website you can read through it uh, and uh, he was talking about sort of trying to keep all the timelines together uh, and figuring out you know making sure that it, it all kind of works and he has done a really amazing job with that it's funny it it's well written. It's an incredibly complex thing when you're dealing with time travel and he manages to hold it together really, really well. I think he's done a stunning job. It's a great piece of drama that, uh, and uh, just funny and very British in its humor. Well worth checking out the Lazarus Project if you've not looked at it. And uh, like you say, it is sci-fi, but it's, it is sci-fi with, 
with a sort of very grounded edge to it, I think, which makes it work really, really well. There's a lot of, of very good stuff out there in terms of returning drama, but for me, foundational slow horses, Apple takes it, I think, probably for me out of that. So next category we have is a brand new category. Just struck me this year that there were a lot of final seasons of shows. An awful lot of final seasons of shows. So uh, I thought, well, why don't we have a best final season category? That, that would be quite a fun one to have. So uh, we've got Atlanta season four, which is on Disney Plus, Happy Valley season three from BBC One, NCIS LA ended with season 14, that was on Sky Max, Star Trek Picard ended with its third season, that's on uh, Prime Video, Endeavor season nine on ITV, Succession season four on Sky Atlantic, Marvelous Mrs. Maisel season five on Prime Video, Barry season four on Sky Comedy, Manifest season four on Netflix, Goldberg season 10 on E4, Jack Ryan season four on Prime Video, Billion season seven on Sky Atlantic, Sex Education season four on Netflix, Ghost season five on BBC One, Breeders season four on Sky Comedy, Servant season four on Apple TV, and Ted Lasso season three on Apple TV as well. Matt, you added those those last two in, which I mean, I yes, I completely missed Ted Lasso and, and that, that that certainly should be in there, uh, unquestionably. And I've not seen either of them, but yes, I, I entirely agree with you. That those two should be there. Yeah, it was interesting with Ted Lasso because it was ending its third season, which was kind of apparently always the plan. And everyone's like, no, we want spin-offs, we want more. And they kind of set up some of those spin-offs. And I remember, was it Hannah Waddington? She was like, we kind of want to lock Jason in a room and get him to write more Ted Lasso. <laughs> yeah. That's how everybody loved it. Uh, but it ended really, really well and you don't really need any more of it. Um, but that was really brilliant. Uh, so I've already talked about, but of course fits in here as well because it's the final season. Um, one that I think was arguably better than those two, though, is Atlanta season four. I think it was season four, episode six or five is one of the best episodes of TV I've ever seen. Just the way that particular episode is constructed. Um, Atlanta was interesting as well because even though it had, you know, a plot and a thing it was doing, it sometimes did manage to do these kind of somewhat self-contained contained episodes. Uh, so it, it never really had a sort of it has to end properly in a certain way. It kind of just finished, but it finished on a satisfying note. But just again, the writing and the quality and just everything in that show was was incredible. So I do think that just edges it in terms of uh, the other shows here. The one I think people are going to vote for and win, though, is um, Succession Season 4. Because even though yes. dis- even the discussion on it has yeah. gone quiet now, obviously that was a few months ago, that was like the only thing anyone was talking about when, when that came out. Um, that might have one of them things of, you know, when we sort of have to look back on these these lists and what came out and sort of oh that came out in february march and now we're in november so people might not remember them as quite as well but um just judging on how well that did at the time i think that one should uh should be i've not seen that season myself personally but i know it made a big big buzz when that finished its run absolutely great you didn't add anything you've marked two for removal though so yes just because again this is such a strong season and like in my it's it's succession versus happy valley for me personally and i think our voters will be succession versus happy valley but you know we as you know ghosts sex education breeders and barry were f- fantastic final seasons but they're going up against succession and happy valley succession sweeping all the awards over in america happy valley potentially sweeping all the awards and you know sarah and has already won awards Awards over here I just felt that the Goldbergs I'm really sorry I watched Goldbergs for all of those 10 seasons that 10th season was awful they, really? wow. they they didn't deal very well with the departure of one of their main cast members right um and Did it sort of finish well? Kind of. Like, you know, it was okay. It wasn't like, it's not memorable for me enough to tell you, you know, I cried a tear or anything like that. It yeah. was just... Right, it right. ended and it was like, oh, it, okay, it's over now. So. In which case, because I've not seen that, I, I will take your word for that and Goldbirds can, yeah. can come out. So that's gone. Um, Endeavour, I just thought, you know, I'm not sure it will pick up the votes from our fans in particular, but I was never a huge fan of it. Um, and I think, again, if you look, I, I think if I was being harsh, I would cut another four out of here just because I know the majority of our votes are going to go on your succession and your happy valleys. So, yeah. You know, it's, just, just to add in here as well for, for Barry, because that's one of the shows I watched here. My problem with that was the fourth season wasn't anywhere near as good as its third, because the third was absolutely incredible TV. I think I put it in my top five or so 
tournament for last year. And it mm-hmm. was building up pretty well with its finale. And I was like, okay, these people are after the, these people. And it was kind of setting itself up. And it had almost kind of a servant problem where it was sort of, the drama was dealt with and then it finished and I was like, oh, okay. And then I was, <laughs> right. that, that, that was pretty much that. So yeah. And there were, there were some choices in the finale that I thought were, were odd. I wouldn't take it off the list. I don't think it was like terrible or anything. It just didn't have quite the punches that it needed to, I think. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I'm looking through these. Uh, I'm wondering what else we could trim out. Maybe NCSLA could come out, but it, it's the fact that it's been around for 14 seasons sort of made me put it in. And uh, I don't know exactly exactly how well it ended i don't remember seeing anybody can be completely sort of oh no that was terrible uh, Did manifest go manifest possibly i don't know uh manifest could possibly go see there was something that i didn't put in here and that was the blacklist which also ended this year mm-hmm. but the finale of that was appalling <laughs> uh, which is a shame after 10 seasons i i just i don't think they landed it i i think they really screwed up the final season of it or certainly i mean not even the final season they kind of screwed up the end of it and it was a really really strange decision to, the, the way they ended it i just sort of feel that it could have been so much better and it should have been so much better it was like they just ran out of road and stopped it wasn't a cancellation it was that's the other thing is i've i've not put shows on here which were cancellations these are, are things that had planned. yeah i would say those aren't technically final seasons so yeah um, or, or intended to be final seasons e- exactly so rather than just being shows that have ended this year it's it's things that actually had planned final seasons for me things that i really really enjoyed billions as i mentioned earlier i thought they landed that really really well marvelous mrs Maisel. i thought they did a stunning job bringing that to a close as well jack ryan is it's tricky because they are sort of setting that up as potentially having a spin-off as well so whilst that character's gone the show will sort of come back in another form i think ghosts i suspect has got a a pretty solid chance here because it's ghosts you know like that don't you yeah and I mean yeah. I love that show there is a lot of love out for that show uh, whether it can beat Succession I don't know but I think that's certainly got a good chance Picard I thought the third season they did a stunning job with it was sort of what everybody wanted it to be for the first two seasons and, and ended up being that in the third season so I think mm. they did a really really good job with that third season I suspect you're right I think Succession has got a good chance but I think Ghosts has got a fairly solid chance here as well so, I kind of think- I think all three of us, including myself, who watched the show, are kind of under talking Ted Lasso because that did like some really incredible stuff. So maybe between Ted Lasso and uh, I still think Succession will, will win, but Ted Lasso is like an Emmy's sweeper at points. So, yeah, yeah, uh, that could do some stuff. Yes, that's that's best final season anyway. Best limited series is the next one, which are, is, of course, things which are one-off things, individual runs. So we have Litvinenko on ITV, X and ITV, Bodies on Netflix, White House Plumbers on Sky Atlantic, Hijack on Apple TV, uh, The Continental on Prime Video, The Long Shadow on ITV, The Reckoning on BBC, Fall of the House of Usher on Netflix, Archie on ITVX, Beef on Netflix, The Doctor Who 60th anniversary specials nolly the sixth commandment and crowded room uh nolly itv sixth commandment bbc crowded room apple tv now obviously at time of recording this the 60th anniversary specials haven't gone out yet but i kind of feel that they need to be on the list somewhere and whilst it is part of a longer run, it is also a sort of one-off thing. So I was kind of umming and ahhing about exactly where to put it. And I thought Best Limited Series, given that it is a self-contained story, even though it is part of a larger show, I, I kind of thought we could probably get away with putting that in here. Matt, you marked the reckoning for yep. removal. Yeah. Uh, from the moment we first heard it, which was, it, it took like a long time to come out, actually, this this show. There were some murmurs of like, oh, well, BBC decided not to do it. It sort of sneakily came out as well. I just thought from the moment the idea was conceived, people know how I feel about these types of things, uh, along with like Jeffrey Dahmer stuff and all that. I just try to imagine when it comes to like a board meeting room and they're saying, right, cool, what, what, are, we, what are we doing next? And someone in a room somewhere said, why don't we go back to uh, Jimmy Savile? 
And it's just, that's what you go to. And I, I get that there's, okay, there's victims and there's, you know, there are reasons for doing this show and stuff. But I just think you went to that. You're like, you, you, you didn't think of something else to do. And particularly it being from the BBC as well. Again, I know that was maybe a different BBC from a long time ago. That just, just the whole idea I just thought was just a no from me. Yeah, so. no, I mean, I, I get that. Although, as uh, I think Gray pointed out when we were talking about it last week, it, although it was aired on the BBC, it wasn't actually made by the BBC. They yeah, handed yeah, everything off to ITV. Studios, yeah. yeah, they handed mm-hmm. it all off to ITV Studios, which I think was a sensible thing to do. I, yeah. I do entirely take your point, though. It's a very controversial thing to go through. It, but in terms of it as a drama, I think it was done incredibly well and in a very sensitive way. It's not an easy watch and it is dark and very, very disturbing. Gray, you've seen this as well, haven't you? So Yeah, I just think I I, I understand what you're saying, Matt. Um, but in defense of it, this was done with the victims' support and they helped drive the narrative and they are bringing awareness. Um, from what I heard, I didn't watch Dharma, but from what I heard, that got a lot of criticism because it glamorized him and wasn't done from the victim's perspective. So if you're looking for a comparison, one of the reasons why it's quite good is that Steve Coogan is amazing. Like, And I do not like Steve Coogan as an actor anyway, but his yeah, portrayal is. was really strong. He is deeply disturbing in this role. I, I know what you say about Steve Coogan. I mean, I'm, I'm, I don't, dislike him i i'm not a huge steve guggen fan either but uh his portrayal of savile in this is is just dark and he he gets it really disturbingly well i mean that means he did his he did his job well then yeah no absolutely i mean it is a it is a phenomenal performance from him in terms of the other shows on the list hijack i thought was great that's the idris elba drama on apple tv i thought that was brilliant bodies i really enjoyed it's a very interesting sort of one-off thing from netflix this is the idea that a, a body appears in various different time periods and it's the same body and it's cops from various different time periods throughout history investing investigating this same murder scene. It's just a really nice idea, well executed as a solid sort of one-off drama. I thought they did a really good job with that. I've not watched The Continental yet because I, I've you know, I've ever admitted this. I've never seen a John Wick film. So <laughs> um, I, I will watch them at some point, but uh, I do, didn't see the point of watching The Continental until I've, seen some, yeah, yeah, uh, until I've seen one of the John Wick films. Uh, Archie, I've put in, uh, even though it isn't out yet, but it looks really good. Archie's the biopic of Cary Grant, which has got Jason Isaacs in the lead, which is an ITV show. That I may may pull that out just because it hasn't sort of aired yet, but it is due to air before the end of November, which is the cutoff point. Basically, the, the cutoff point for the awards is uh, we the end of November. So um, mm-hmm. some of these shows, whilst we're talking about them now, we've put them in the list, but they might not have started airing yet because we've moved to the date when we start doing the just competition. To, uh, I'd like Hijack to win this. I think that was a very, very good show. That also very did the sort show. of the cliffhanger really, really well. Now, I, I actually had it available to me all at once. I know it went out weekly, so it's got a different format there. But the way they sort of cut the cliffhangers and you, you immediately had this sort of, oh, I want to see what's next kind of thing. And yeah. it, that can be a, that can be a bit of a cliched sort of tool to use, but it used it very, very well. So um, plus Idris Elba was really good in it. Yeah, I thought they did a great job with that. I thought Nolly was fantastic as well, which was the the one about um, Crossroads. Another Russell T. Davis drama. I, I thought they did a great job with that gray uh six commandments i don't know actually so the sixth commandment was the um again based on a true story it was about the young man who fell in love with the vicar and then it was played by timothy spall yes um, and then he, the vicar died through drinking alcohol and this young lover then moved on to the older lady up the road and fell in love with her and it was just this horrendous and it's true all true again all, all done with it, the victim's sort of permission in the family of the victims just telling how this young man manipulated him. four part BBC One drama it's really strong performances from Timothy Spall and Anne Reid was the actress a very well known actress Anne Reid been around for years was, again it's absolutely brilliantly done and I think they're just like, fantastic performances but we've put Doctor Who in the list guys so we probably yeah, know yeah, yeah, that that's so- going to 
<laughs> yeah, that's the thing that's going to win. I mean, <laughs> unquestionably, because uh, we always had a rule with this that for years, particularly during the Tennant and the, the Russell T Davies era, whenever we put Doctor Who on the list, Doctor Who won the category. So I'd be surprised if it doesn't here. It's just that's the thing that's likely to take the top of the list. So it's sort of probably going to be a fight for second place. I would like to hijack to do well. Uh, it'd be interesting to see how some of the ITV stuff does as well in there. I would like to see Hijack up there as well. So we'll see. People uh, do love Idris Elba. That is true. Yes. Best new comedy series. We have um, Ghosts US. So not the UK version, the US version, which landed this year on BBC Three. Extraordinary on Disney Plus. Our Flag Means Death on the BBC. Colin from Accounts on the BBC. Everyone Else Burns on Channel 4. Shrinking on Apple TV. Queen of Oz on BBC. Changing Ends on ITV. Not Dead Yet on Disney Plus. Am I Being Unreasonable on BBC One. Black Ops on BBC One slash Three. And Still Up on Apple TV Plus. Gray, you doubled the size of this list. <laughs> <laughs> I think I watch a lot of comedy. You know, I, I went do. through that phase, guys, when I watched like 30 minute shows. This really shows because I was watching a lot of comedy. And you know what? Again, a really good slew of good comedies on there, particularly Changing Ends, which is the Alan Carr one. So good. I mean, yeah. if if either of you have, haven't watched that, I just it's such a well put together sitcom. And it's one of those ones where he's sort of doing the over the, the narration over the top. Right. Um, and it's really well done. I, I enjoyed it so much. Colin from Accounts, outstanding. One of my favourite TV shows of the year as well. Really, really happy with that. And so I just wanted to throw a few more up there because I just think we had a really good year. <laughs> Am I being unreasonable? Daisy Mae Cooper is going to do yes. really well, I think. So, yeah, what a... I, I, the only one I recommended remove is because it's just not as strong as the others. Is everyone else Burns? Um, yeah. Which, yeah, it was Simon Bird from In Between Us, his his one. It was a bit... Oh, that one. Yeah, evangelical, right. end of the world. I left it in a list later on that we talked about, but in terms of best new comedy up against some of the ones I've just added there, possibly not as strong. Yes, I think that's that's probably fair. I've not seen all the, all the comedies. I don't watch anywhere near as many as you do. Uh, <laughs> so I did actually watch some of Everyone Else Burns, and I didn't enjoy it as much as I know some people did so it's in there but i yeah i mean i i, I don't know uh, i really enjoyed our flag means death i thought that was great uh ghost us i i know some people taken against it because of the fact that it's a us remake of ghost but it goes in a wonderfully different direction and i think they've done a fantastic job with that adaptation of it the thing i love to see when is extraordinary because i loved that series that was the one about the girl who is in a society which is basically made up of everybody having superpowers and her powers haven't landed you know it's they're supposed to get their sort of powers coming when they're like 18 years old and they've not appeared it's really funny it's a british comedy but made for disney plus it's got a very british vibe to it and i really 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 like that and i would i would love to see that win i think our flag means death has probably got a very strong chance here ghosts maybe i I, I don't know. Changing Ends, I know, is has been very popular, and that's just been renewed for a second season as well. That is coming back. What about you, Matt? I added Still Up, which I've just finished a couple of weeks or so ago. That was absolutely incredible and completely came out of nowhere. That was one of them things you watch a trailer for and it comes out sort of two weeks after. I actually went through the situation of saving up a few of the episodes because they were so short and they were over so quickly, which is a good thing. I ended up saving like the last three, watched them at once. I, I enjoyed it that much. I just wanted more of it in, in one go. And then the season was over before I knew it. So I really, really enjoyed that. Um, that was about these two, um, what do you call it? Really? Insomniacs. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's only, sorry, yeah. Um, and it's about their sort of friendship slash relationship and it, it kind of goes from there. Um, as much as I love that show, uh, Extraordinary was indeed what the name suggests. Uh, that's another show that came out of nowhere as well. Yeah. Uh, very, very early in the year. Um, and I've been saying for quite a while that as much as we love our Marvel and DC stuff, I want more shows that have nothing to do with Marvel and DC that involve people with powers and to you know have original stuff like that like how we used to get misfits and things and extraordinary fit that really perfectly i would say it's probably one of the best shows of the year 
I see. Uh, Shrinking season one was very, very good as well. Um, but I would like extraordinary to win this. Of course, if still up won it, then that would be cool as well. So yeah, um, but I, just, I just don't watch a lot of those BBC shows or those ITV shows. Uh, those are probably the two apps I click on the least. <laughs> Yes. So, yeah. No, yeah. I'm, I'm kind of with you there. I, I tend to go and watch sort of iPlayer things when something very specific drops, like they buy in a US show like Our Flag Means Death. You know, that that's mm-hmm. when I tend to go there. Moving from new comedies to returning comedies, Marvelous Mrs. Maisel season five, Barry season four, The Great season three, Young Sheldon season six, Only Murders in the Building season three, Ghost US season two, because uh, we had two seasons of Ghost this year. Starstruck Season 3, Sex Education Season 4, Brassic Season 5, Ghost UK Season 5, Breeders Season 4, Upload Season 3, What We Do in the Shadows Season 5, The Cleaner Season 2, and The Bear Season 2. Gray, I know you added The Cleaner and The Bear. I, I should have thought of putting The Bear on here. I forget that's a comedy, but yes. I it's really put- hard to say it's a comedy, isn't it? <laughs> like, yes. Is there one for like intense, heart pace inducing drama? <laughs> that happened to be kind of funny yeah no i know what you mean yeah so. <laughs> it's an amazing list like again yeah. uh, some of these we know are in the final list the final seasons but we've we've got some good sort of imported comedy and some good homegrown comedy in here i've i've obviously put the bear on there for a reason i, I think i suggested we remove young sheldon because i didn't want that to win because <laughs> it just won, it just won an award over in the uk didn't it and beat all of our popular shows oh, is that why you put remove oh. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, I know that it is quite popular and it's a big bang sort of spin off, but we've got such great stuff. I don't want it to win. That's why I put remove. I know it'll probably stay. It's just my bitterness. Like, let's take out some of the big players so that's something like the bear. Oh, now it makes um, sense. Now, now it makes sense. To- <laughs> yeah, you might, that, now it makes sense why you mark your shelter to remove and brassic for removal. Now that makes sense. Yes, I see. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't think we could do that. <laughs> you can't just take them out because you don't want them to. Oh win. no, they just. Yeah, they just. I don't think they were as good as the, the others. But anyway, you know that that was my sort of justification. But mine would be the bear or ghost UK maybe for the win. Hopefully. What about you, Matt? Barry was was good. Like I said, uh, which ones have I actually seen in this list? Um, I haven't seen a ton of these. Upload season three kind of just came out. I am catching up with Young Sheldon, but that's on season four. Uh, Brassic I some of these are like really recently kind of come out. I just haven't had a chance to catch them yet. Uh, Brassic I have enjoyed for its four seasons. I've not got to the fifth one yet. But uh, you know what? Because of how creative Upload is, even though I've not seen that third season, I would go with that just because it's a very creative, good show. For me, I mean, Marvelous Mrs. Basil, I love that show from start to finish and I, I would love to see that win. I think The Great will possibly do quite well, even though people are probably voting more on the second season rather than the third season because the second season came out on Channel 4, I think, over the last sort of 12 months, whereas the third season I don't think has dropped to a wider audience yet. Only Murders, I I think, is brilliant. And I would love to see that win. Uh, Ghost US, I would love to see win. Although we've got Ghost UK in there. And again, I think that is is possibly the thing which may take it. But there's a lot of love for Brassic in there. There is a lot of love for young Sheldon in there. So I, I, I don't I, know. I think we're underestimating the bear in this. Uh, that Maybe. Has quite a few, quite a few. I think that's going to really well. I've, I've heard a lot of US people talk about it. I think it's on FX over there. The people I've heard talk about it have said it's like top tier you know television yeah. and stuff i've just not checked it out yet so maybe that one maybe that one could get a sneaky win yeah i mean this is of course there's sex education in there as well which has a huge following so mm. i i don't know uh that that's going to be an interesting category this year to to see because there's a lot of very high quality decent shows in there Best new sci-fi series. The interesting, we've got sci-fi and fantasy, and the lists for these have been a bit shorter actually this year. But uh, best new sci-fi series, we've got Star Wars: Ahsoka, Quantum Leap season one, Hello Tomorrow season one, Big Door Prize season one, Silo season one, and The Rig season one. That's on Prime Video. So, Matt, I was, I think it was yesterday because I was looking at, I've looked at this list like quite a lot because you know you don't want to miss stuff out or whatever. I was almost going to put a remove. Boat next to a soaker, but then I thought, no, nah, I won't do that. <laughs> um, <laughs> it, it wasn't as good as we'd hoped it would be, but it wasn't like terrible. 
Hello Tomorrow. I've still got the finale actually to watch, not because I couldn't bother to watch it. I was going to wait until it got renewed and that hasn't happened yet. So I, I love the show, but um, I just haven't caught that finale yet. That was an interesting one, Hello Tomorrow, because it's sort of, you got the idea of what it was about at the start. It took a few episodes for the premise to actually kick off, but then once it did, it just got better and better and better. And then hopefully the finale is really good. Hopefully that gets renewed as well. Uh, Big Bill Prize was quite fun. Uh, Silo, Silo for me, I enjoyed it and it was you know, near that standard of Apple TV. It wasn't as like brilliant, brilliant as I was kind of hoping, but I still thought it was really, okay. really good. Um, although the finale did some really exciting stuff. So I quite enjoyed that. And the rig I've not seen, I would like Hello Tomorrow to win this category. I suspect Ahsoka, just because it's Star yeah. Wars, will probably take it. I would like to see Silo win because I thought that was an outstanding series. I also really, really like what they did with Quantum Leap because they took the basic premise of the original series and molded it with a slightly different edge and the changes they made to it make made it sort of worthwhile bringing that show back well by right. sort of taking the original premise of you know guy leaping into bodies across history trying to get back home but then they added this sort of mystery thing of what's going on actually back at quantum leap headquarters and there's a whole mystery surrounding that and that's something that wasn't there in the original show and it adds this new dimension to it and it it really works very very well so I would like to see that up there as well. Uh, the rig I found quite enjoyable. I know it had a sort of slightly mixed reaction, but I really quite enjoyed that. But out of those, I, I mean, I liked uh, Soka, I think, slightly more than you did, but yeah. Silo would be the thing that would take the top spot for me. I don't know whether you've seen any of these, Gary, because I... Know. I would like to let you know both that I have seen 50% of this list. Well done. I, I am almost like a sci-fi professional. <laughs> 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 I have seen big door prize silo and the rig all very good uh or bizarre if you're talking about the rig um i think silo should win this i think it's really good it's it's one of the first sci-fi programs that i've watched in a long while where i have just been gripped and I've, i can't wait for the next episode type thing and i'm telling everyone to watch it like even if they're not a sci-fi fan like myself I was like, you need to go and watch the silo. It's gripping. Um, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to the second season, which I think at the moment would be 2025 because Probably, it got yeah. really held up by the strikes. So um, no, really, really, really liked it. But yeah, as a sci-fi professional, um, yeah, <laughs> I, that, that's my interpretation. You wait until we go onto the gaming list. I'll be there. <laughs> uh -huh. I'm a changed man. <laughs> uh -huh. Yep. Um, so, um, uh, best new fantasy series, which is is the the other shorter category. We've got Interview with the Vampire, which landed on BBC this year. Uh, Last of Us, Wolfpack, Lockwood and Co, and One Piece. There's not that many shows in here, but but Last of Us is going to win this category. I think. I, gee, yeah. I, I would be very surprised if anything else does. Matt, I don't know whether you've seen any of the other things on there. My sister keeps uh, gently recommending One Piece to me because she really loves it and thinks I'd like it. Uh, that's got quite a big fandom behind I mean, it. So that might huge, do, that, yeah. That might do quite well, yeah. Uh, that would maybe be in second place. Um, yeah, I've only seen the one, one show in this list, which you can guess what, the, what that one is. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I hope The Last of Us wins, of course. How did Interview with Vampire go? I didn't really sort of hear much about how actually good it was. I really enjoyed what they did with Interview with the Vampire. It's different to the books because they've changed the time period slightly and they've changed the actual interviewer and the interview structure. But they've done a really nice modernization of it and I think it worked really well as a series so um, yeah I really enjoyed that but it, it, it's still not a patch on The Last of Us because nothing is Grey I'm assuming The Last of Us is the only thing you've seen out of here no I've seen Lockwood and Co as well I tell you what I'm surprising everybody today you are. Uh, yeah I've seen Lockwood I really yeah. like Lockwood and Co very very sad that that got axed after one season I th it's, that has so much potential oh, yeah, I really yeah. hoped in the background yeah. he would be able to sell it because there's so many so I thought, well, maybe they'll sell it on. Someone else will pick it up. Someone else will make it. But um, no, I, I do think it's a Last of Us category to lose, basically. But um, fantastic. I did quite well on that one as well. Two yeah. out of five. No, I, I really enjoyed Lock Lockwood & Co as well. I, I think it's such a shame that Netflix decided that they weren't going to move forward with that. It baffles me, that decision. Yeah, I thought it was really good. Best returning sci-fi series. We've got Star Trek Picard Season 3, Mandalorian Season 3, Star Trek Strange New World Season 2, Foundation Season 2, 
2, Invasion Season 2, Lazarus Project Season 2, and La Brea Season 2. This is a tricky one for me because I, I love Foundation. It is outstanding, that second season. Strange New Worlds, though, is just phenomenal what they did with the second season of that i thought was brilliant and it's going to be interesting because you've got a couple of star trek shows going up against star wars and i love the lazarus project as well invasion i'm less happy with but you know uh and la Brea, i just love because it's kind of bonkers matt yeah with invasion it's like i said in my review that i did a couple of weeks ago it felt almost like a like if you look at what happens in the actual plot and the story and the thing that actually do move forward because there's only like two or three out of the main plot lines that actually move forward and not by much it almost felt like an extension of season one as opposed to an actual next part right, if, yeah, that, yeah. If, if that makes any sense like a like a second half of season one even though it's not hopefully season three will actually push things forward more i don't think it was bad i still think it was good and all right uh, nowhere near as good as the first season but it just it was just odd uh, the way that they sort of structured everything uh, for me foundation wins this again uh because the reason i've already described I didn't see, I actually didn't see either of those Star Trek shows. I did jump out of Picard after, uh, during season one. Uh, Strange New World, I just never, I can't remember when I got rid of Paramount Plus, but I just never went back onto it. So that was why I didn't sort of right, yeah. catch on to that next season. It wasn't because I didn't want to watch the show. I just never went back onto Paramount Plus. Mandalorian, really, really loved that third season. Love a lot of stuff that it did. Uh, so number one for me would be Foundation, season two, and then The Mandalorian. Great. What about you? Unfortunately, I've only seen one in this list. In my defense is because i was making room for all the others i watched for the best <laughs> new category <laughs> right um, so, <laughs> i've only seen the lazarus project and i'm a few episodes into that it only got released uh, a couple of weeks ago and i am really enjoying it um but then i am not blind to what i've heard from other people talking about some of these other series and i think star trek strange new worlds just from the reviews just from listening to your passion for it as well dave i think that could have a good chance but the downside is on paramount plus so it might not get the votes because people may not have access to it. So then you've got a bigger chance for something like Picard or Mandalorian to come in. But for me, it would be mm-hmm. Lazarus Project, but I've only seen one. So I'm just going to listen to what I've heard from so many of the others. And I think, yeah, that's where I'd go with it. Yeah, I think that's fair. I mean, I, I absolutely, I would not be unhappy if the Lazarus Project won this because uh, I do think that's an absolutely outstanding piece of writing and, and just a, a really fun series as well. Returning fantasy series, we've got Black Mirror Season 6, American Horror Story Delicate, that's Season 12, uh, Good Omen Season 2, Outlander Season 7, Carnival Row Season 2. I've not seen all of these. Outlander, I really enjoy. Uh, Black Mirror, that sixth season, uh, there was some good... I mean, it, it's difficult with that because it, it varies so much from episode to episode. Good Omen Season 2, though, for me, is the standout. I think that's just a outstanding series, and despite the way that they end the second season, which I'm not going to go into, but I, I really need a full confirmation that it's back for a third reasonably soon because uh, it <laughs> deserves a third season and it's set up for a third season. So, Gray, have I've you seen only, Yeah, I've only seen Black Mirror. We've got American Horror Story Delicate on our list that me and my partner would watch together, and I haven't seen the others. Um, but I really struggled with some of the Black Mirror episodes. I thought the first one, was fantastic um Joni's awful Joni's awful yeah so I really loved what they did there that was a classic Black Mirror playing with the conventions Netflix on board to help with that and really sort of spun conventions but then I struggled with some of the later episodes so I'm not sure if it's strong enough to win when it's up against something like Good Omens got a huge fan base and you know people might vote for the American Horror Story just again because it's a really good one well-known franchise but yeah a tough one for me to call on that one it's going to be an interesting one I suspect Good Omens will probably take it, but well, American Horror Story may as well. That's uh, I, I think those are likely to be the the top two. Because um, whilst I like Black Mirror, I, I don't think it was the strongest season that they've done. I, I think the biggest problem Black Mirror had with that season is it, it veered rather too far away from its core principle of what people think Black Mirror should be. And I think it, it strayed quite a lot from that with this. So I don't know. We'll see with that. If you notice, there's one that isn't on the list, which you might have thought might have been, 
in but shouldn't actually be on the list which is The Witcher because that third season was well it, it annoyed me there's a difference between bad television and television that's really bad that annoys you <laughs> and that was the third season of that so because I kind of thought about like oh there was a show we watched that we didn't put on which was The Witcher season 3 but that's because it was bad and this is the best list that is true yeah I mean that that was sort of the reason why because I did look at that and wonder whether we should put it on or not but because it I, wasn't I, great. I, I, <laughs> I don't and think I, it deserves to be on the list. No, I, yeah. I kind of don't either. Because I, I did look at that as well as a possibility. But yeah. Yeah. But that's one that you kind of thought we, we might have put on the list, but it wasn't good. I don't know what's happened with the American Horror Story, but my enthusiasm to watch any of those has just like completely died. Um, hopefully that's a good talk season though. Uh, good omens, you've said nothing but good things about it. So I, um, yeah, let's hope that, that one wins, I suppose. Yeah. Best new comic book slash superhero series we've got American Born Chinese on Disney Plus Secret Invasion on Disney Plus Gen V on Prime Video My Adventures with Superman on Channel 4 Scott Pilgrim Takes Off on Netflix and Extraordinary on Disney Plus fewer superhero things out this year and there weren't that many well, I mean, there was like one Marvel series, as far as I can tell, this year. You'd think and that probably one. shouldn't be on the list. <laughs> yeah, and, and I mean, arguably, you could argue that that probably shouldn't be on the list, actually. But yeah. um, I, 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 wonder I, if it, I wonder if it's because like the CWDC stuff is like... Died well, yeah. Bit. That is true. I mean, the CWDC stuff has gone. There is another Marvel series and returning comic book series. But yeah, because all the CW stuff is now disappeared, there isn't as much in terms of TV shows. And some of the stuff that has been out in the US hasn't been out over here, like Doom Patrol, for example, don't think actually aired over here. So, mm. Well, even outside of the CW stuff, DC's really kind of cleaned house in the last year or so. Yeah. Um, so a lot, a lot of those shows just haven't been there. And it's going to even specifically for DC next year, it's going to be even emptier because yeah. you've got Joker. Is Penguin out next year? No, I think they've um, got I guess that. Aquaman 2 technically counts. But yeah, it's so uh, going to be a very quiet time for DC. So yes. I really, really like Gen V, as I've spoken about before. Um, Extraordinary, I really, really like. Secret Invasion, I seem to like more than the average person. Yes. Um, see, the thing is with that, even though they kind of had more of a secret invasion by the end of it, you've got to remember how that works into future stuff as well. Mm -hmm. So there could be like more of that, that, not like a second season, but that story could like continue in, in other bits. But I had some great stuff in Secret Invasion. It just maybe wasn't quite fully the thing that it sort of could have and should have been, I suppose. Mm -hmm. um, but for me, for me, uh, Gen V and Extraordinary are the best two here. Yeah, I would agree. Gen V, Extraordinary, certainly in my top two. My Adventure with Superman, I really rather enjoyed. It's a great little animated series you can find on uh, Channel 4 streaming. And, I did uh, start that, and I just, I don't know, it just didn't land to me. Yeah. Maybe I need to try a bit more of it, but um, it just, I don't know. Gray, have you got an opinion on um, any of this? My vote would be for Extraordinary. Um, oh. I hated Secret Evasion, but I just like that wow. we are looking at a comic book <laughs> superhero series and it's a little bit different. Um, and I like Extraordinary, that reason. But I only just released, but I've heard amazing things about Scott Pilgrim already. There's some really interesting reviews about that take on it, um, which sort of diverts away from the film, but uses all the film's voice cast. So yeah. I'm not sure do, if that would... Do you would, watch um, I haven't yet. That's my other problem. I haven't got round to it. Again, it's on my list. It's just I haven't had time. Okay. Do you watch this, the boys? Sort of, I do watch the boys. That's why I really want to cool. watch it. I'm so behind. <laughs> Any love for American born Chinese off either of you? I haven't I watched it. I haven't seen it. Ah, interesting. Good show. Definitely worth uh, checking that out. Is that the Michelle Yeoh thing? Yes, yes. And Ki Hu An is in it as well. Definitely worth checking that one out. It's It's got some great things in it. Think Extraordinary is probably a, a stronger show for me, but I really, really enjoyed that as well. Best returning comic book superhero series. And this is a much reduced list because No Walking Dead, much fewer DC shows than we've had previously. And things like Superman and Lois haven't gone out this year over here. So we can't put that in. But uh, Titan Season 4 on Netflix, Loki Season Season 2 on Disney+, Plus, Heartstopper Season 2 on Netflix, Invincible Season 2 on Prime Video, and Sweet Tooth Season 2 on Netflix. Um, I'm really enjoying Invincible Season 2. I think they did a good job. Loki, though, I, I thought was phenomenal. I think I really like what they do with that. Matt? I'm going to go with Heartstopper Season 2, which me okay, and Brain I, Yes, I, I'm yeah. sure the pair of you will do, yes. Yeah. <laughs> 
yeah, a few weeks ago or so we, we did that. Come back for a third season as well, which is good. Um, but yeah, really just heartwarming and just brilliantly written. There was lots of little pockets of nice scenes, if that makes sense. And they were just, they just handled all of it really, really well. So that was really good. Uh, Loki, I think, was better than season one. I don't think season one was, was bad. I just think season two was better. I know it'll be a good place to not have a third season. I still think we'll see Loki later, but um, that's finished that off for now. Uh, but that was a very, very good second season. Considering all the timey-wimey-ish sort of stuff it's got to deal with, I thought it dealt with that very well, and not everything deals with that sort of topic very kind of well. Uh, so that was very, very good. Um, Invincible, I haven't actually started yet, but I've kind of just come out. And Titans, I dropped out in the third season. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, well, uh, but yeah, I'd go, I'd go with Heart Stopper here. Great. Um, um, heart, go on. Well, it would be, but I do think like Loki will win it here. I think it was for the hardcore comic book fans. They're going to vote for that one over Heartstopper. Heartstopper, obviously, me and Matt love it, and what it does for the the LGBT community is fantastic. But I think I Loki might just nip it and uh, get a really high percentage because it was really good. From the negativity that's going around a lot of the Marvel stuff at the moment this i felt was a really good show for them um and it really does set up some really interesting stuff for the next phase and that so no i'd, I'd go for that sorry matt not to be controversial but i love the stoppers. <laughs> <laughs> no, no i don't yeah. think loki will will win but i like heart stuff at the most here so yeah probably loki for me although i i did love invincible as well best factual structured reality entertainment show so this is an interesting mishmash of things uh great rishi baker off last week tonight with john oliver never mind the buzzcocks taskmaster last leg welcome to wrexham the uh, robbie williams documentary on netflix beckham documentary on netflix clarkson's farm season two the traitors bbc late night life set on channel four and is it cake two on netflix you're responsible for those bottom three <laughs> great um, i mean I, I have to say i did watch late night life set and i did rather enjoy how anarchic that was the traitors Traitors, we had some discussion about this before we started recording because technically it shouldn't be eligible because it launched on the 29th of November 2022. But there is a new season coming up and because we didn't allow it in last year or we didn't put it in last year, we're going to put it in this year because majority of it did run through sort of the end of the year. <laughs> I, I think we can put it in. I, I don't think anybody had any idea what a phenomenon that show was going to be. In terms of what I'd like to see win, um, Welcome to Wrexham, I thought was fantastic. Although I do think the last episode wasn't quite as sort of big as maybe I thought it probably should be. Clarkson's Farm, I think, uh, whatever you think of Clarkson, and I, I entirely understand your opinions, that show itself, I think, is they do an amazing job with. Last week tonight with John Oliver, I think he's a spectacular show. And Buzzcocks, I think, is a brilliant show as well. So there's some great stuff in there. And Last Leg, I also have a huge fan of. Gray. So this is my favourite category. I know I uh, two years ago I said, oh, Dave, can we put a category in that covers some of these? I've seen the majority of these um, and... I would not be sad to see many of them win. I think Beckham did a fantastic thing for documentaries, but the traitors by far should be the winner here. Um, I fought for it to be on the list because it didn't quite get on last year. And then Late Night Live it fantastic for what it did for Saturday, uh, Friday night television. Um, what an amazing, amazing round of programs. Um, I love so many of them and they, they bring a lot of joy to my life of marking and planning because uh, I can have them on in the background and feel very entertained. So um, traitors us for the win yay <laughs> uh, was there any particular reason that you wanted to take out the Robbie Williams documentary or, or was that just to remove competition <laughs> no I just don't think it did as well as the Beckham documentary I think the Beckham documentary was uh, it kept, interestingly the way they were released Beckham first and then Williams almost feeling like Williams is trying to pick up the back of Beckham in terms of its style and structure but I think the Beckham documentary was just had a little bit more class and aestheticism uh, the director um, was it's a little bit more polished in the way he approached and really got to the heart of some of the people in the interview. Not, you know, I think there was some quality, but if you're going to put one really strong documentary in there, I'd go for Beckham. Even though I'd love Traitors to win, I do have a gut feeling that Welcome to Wrexham might take it. Um, but, you know, that's just my view. Matt, what about you? Uh, well, I love Welcome to Wrexham, but uh, one of these shows in this list has got the scene, which is Ole Gunnar Solskjaer scoring a goal to win Man United's treble, and you can guess which one that is. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, oh yeah, um, God. And it was, uh, it was still just a magical moment. Um, and it was really good to, even though obviously very familiar with how all that happened and stuff, but just the way the whole class of 92 happened, particularly how Beckham dealt with things in that season itself. Not all of which I was actually completely aware of, which was good to get that from the documentary. But um, that was just really brilliant. And unless you deliberately go to something like Sky Sports or something like that on YouTube, you don't often get to hear these people talk in this sort of way. Usually you just see pre or post match interviews and then you see bits online. You don't always quite get to see, you know, Sir Alex Ferguson sitting down and talking or Gary Neville talking about days of class of 92 and all the other people that were involved. Um, I've also not heard Victoria Beckham talk as much as in that as what I've seen before. So it was good to hear more from her. I've not actually heard her talk like a ton about this sort of, you know, Beckham era and everything. So that was a good addition. So it wasn't only just a case of me going back through, you know, glorious May United days and stuff. Um, it was also good to just hear from other people in ways that I thought were more interesting than, than they, they could have been. So that that was that was very good to go through. I think Graham, me, me and you are going to have to talk about the Beckham thing at some point because I'll be very interested to sort of uh, get your get your deeper thoughts on that. I'm surprising everybody today, sci-fi and football. I mean, what <laughs> yeah. <next>? I know. <laughs> yeah. It was interesting when you mentioned that you watched it on uh, guitar. I thought, oh wow, Gray's actually gone and watched that, so that's good. Yeah, it, it did have a Spice Girl in it, Matt. I was easily won over. <laughs> <laughs> cool. <Fair enough. laughs> So we come to British TV show of the year. Now, I, I, there's probably a clear winner for this, but uh, Doctor Who's 60th anniversary specials, Ghost Season 5, Happy Valley Season 3, Silent Witness Season 26, Brassic Season 5, Boiling Point Season 1, and The Traitors again. Again, it's got Doctor Who in it, so I, I suspect that is the thing that will probably tip it. But, Grey, any particular... Um, I would love it to be The Traitors or Happy Valley. Those are my two who I think would be the better one for breaking all the mold for reality TV, uh, one for just epic drama and Sarah Lancashire. But I think it's probably going to be Doctor Who, but you know what? what, It's our voters. We know that they'll probably take it. Was there a particular reason for wanting to take out Silent Witness? Oh, it's just season 26. It's getting quite boring now. (laughs) (laughs) Is it, is it the best show at season 26? I'm not sure. Um, I think, it didn't do anything special in the season. It wasn't like a breakout. Oh my God, did you see what happened this season? I, I just think I'm not you sure this is special. I, I, I'm, I'm kind of with you on that. Let's take it out. Um, so hey. that's gone. Gives your traitors a chance to, to pick up <laughs> again. Matt, <laughs> any, anything particular uh, out of this? A lot of these, I don't think are your sort of shows anyway. So I'm just going to save everybody some time and just say Doctor Who. <laughs> yes. I think that's, that's the best way to go about this. Best animated series we've got next uh, My Adventures with Superman Season 1, Scott Pilgrim Takes Off Season 1, The Bad Batch Season 2 on Disney Plus uh, Bob's Burgers Season 13 on Disney Plus, Future Armor Season 11 on Disney Plus, Star Trek Lower Deck Season 4 on Paramount Plus, Rick and Morty Season 7 on E4, Big Mouth Season 7 on Netflix, Solar Opposite Season 4 on Disney Plus and Invincible Season 2 on Prime Video As much as I love The Bad Batch and I enjoy Rick and Morty and I love, love Solar Opposites. The thing that still takes it for me is going to be Lower Decks. I just think they're doing something very different with that show. And I really enjoy that it's a Star Trek series that is actually a genuine Star Trek series, even though it seemed a bit like a parody when it first started, but it's turned into something much more than that. So I would vote for that, I think, out of this list. Matt, what are you uh, going for? I've not seen actually any of these, but I do like Invincible, so I'll go with the second season of that. I did, With Rick and Morty and with Solar Opposites, I kept sort of like browsing past them. I'm like, oh, I'll, I'll click on that eventually. I think maybe, not that it's to the show's detriment or anything, but because of all the changes and stuff that have gone on with that, it's kind of not enthused me to go and like, oh, I've got to go and click on them kind of thing. Um, mm. I'm not saying those changes have made the show worse because I don't know that because I've not clicked on them, but it just kind of lowered my enthusiasm for them a little bit, but I, I should go and catch up with them eventually. Solar Opposites, I actually think is a better show than Rick and Morty at this point. Definitely. Yeah, I've thought that in the last couple of seasons of like both of them so yeah 
Gray, what about you? For me, it would be Solar Opposites. I haven't seen Invincible Season 2, heard great things. It would be Solar Opposites with Invincible. Um, I might have to do a retcon in a few months' time when I eventually catch up to Futurama. I was doing a big rewatch before the new season, so I never got round to watching the new season because I'm still doing a rewatch. So maybe in about March when I get to it, I'll let you know if it should be the winner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I intentionally left off The Simpsons and Family Guy from the list this time around because... I think whilst they're fun shows, you don't hear people talking about them anywhere near as much as they used to. And I, I think there are better, more interesting animated series out than those right now. And I know people love them, but I think there are more interesting stuff out there, which is, is why I've not put them on here. This is the point where Grey goes a bit quiet and uh, we get to uh, Geek Town's Game of the Year. So we have Starfield, Dave the Diver, Spider-Man 2, Hogwarts Legacy, Star Wars Jedi Survivor, Legends of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom, Baldur's Gate 3. At the moment, we've got Resident Evil 4, but we'll talk to Matt about that in a minute. Um, right. Alan Wake 2, Lies of P, Forspoken, and Final Fantasy 16. You made a note to re- next to Resident Evil 4 that it is a remake, and uh, I hadn't realised that because I don't really follow the Resident Evil games. So. Right. My only point was if we're going to include Resident Evil 4, then I'd also like to include Dead Space, but then if you're not including remakes, take them both off. I've not got a problem with either of them being on. They're both very good games because I wanted to include Dead Space, but, uh, and because you put Resi 4 on there, I thought, okay, if we include remakes, makes me put them put them both on okay well I think we'll put Dead Space in as well I mean which I know is extending the list but we think we'll do that so we've added Dead Space to the list as well you've marked Jedi Survivor and Starfield for removal and I know you didn't get on with Jedi Survivor at all did you no I don't think that game is in an acceptable state because I played it a couple of weeks ago initially after launch it had a couple of patches it still had problems with it then I put the game down with the intention to go back to it later once I had some patches went and played two or three other games came back to it and it was better but there was still just to me too many problems with the game i don't think it like needs to be removed per se because there were people that did enjoy it and starfield just wasn't as good as it should have or could have been um i think anyway yeah i mean i take your point on both of those games but equally i played them without having any problems at all i mean there was there was a few issues with starfield and i know it's not as good a game as people necessarily wanted it to be but i would defend keeping it in the list particularly as i've got nearly 300 hours in it so i i I feel that it should be there i'm fine with keeping both of them in but those Um, would be my my reasons yeah and i really enjoyed star wars jedi survivor i i thought that was a really good game i sort of want to keep that in i i loved hogwarts legacy i really enjoyed that uh spider-man 2 i've put in but i haven't actually played because i don't have a ps5 i haven't actually played through Baldur's gate 3 yet either but but I desperately want to start playing that and I will pick it up at some point. One game that I am playing that I didn't put in, for example, was City Skylines 2, which I'm enjoying and I've got a number of hours in, but it's just, that isn't in a particularly good state. Certainly, I mean, you compare that to something like Starfield and there are fundamental problems with City Skylines 2, which I'm sure Uh, will get patched out. But as I think I said on the podcast last week, it is one one of those games that in you know a few years time is going to be great it's a good base game but there are a lot of issues with it and i i just can't bring myself to put it in alongside starfield at this point um mm-hmm. you know uh dave the diver though for a little i mean it isn't technically an independent game because they are backed by a big company but uh, it has that sort of indie game feel to it and uh it's such a well-written story and, and it's really fun and i i love that game so so, uh, I'm, mm-hmm. yeah, I was happy to put that in there. Any, what would you be going for out of this? In terms of the stuff I've played, I've put some time into Starfield, but I've put that on the on the shelf for now. Uh, Spider-Man 2, I finished was it last week. I reviewed that. Uh, I did get the Platinum, but getting the Platinum in that game is, you know, not too long. Hogwarts Legacy, I really like. I'm going to try and get the Platinum on that, but I had to do a lot of collectible-based stuff, so I'm going to leave the, the rest of that for Christmas. I did really enjoy it, and it, it, that, and it was kind of... I'm not like a Harry Potter fan fan, but I really do love sort of the, the world and stuff, and it was definitely that game that fans had wanted for a long time of sort of forget about connecting it to Harry Potter's story, just make an RPG game 
within the world of Harry Potter that we can all just customize our own. I mean, you create your own completely own uh, character and that feel that did that job very, very, very well. Star Wars I've already spoken about. Uh, Zelda, I didn't actually quite finish. I think I'm right near the end of it. I didn't quite enjoy it as much as I'd hoped to, but I think that was more of a me problem. I never quite got the complete hang of the new mechanics, which annoyed me. But uh, Baldur's Gate 3, from what I understand, even if I'd started that from launch, I'd probably still be playing it. Um, but uh, I've heard nothing but really good things about Baldur's Gate 3. I'm very curious to check it out. I just never jumped on it from day one. Uh, Resi 4, even though Resident Evil is not my thing, I know a lot of people really love Resident Evil 4. Uh, if we are including Dead Space as well, I probably would pick Dead Space as my favorite on this entire list. Uh, I just really, really enjoyed that. And after years of hearing, oh, Dead Space is the best horror game, it's this, it's that. And it wasn't a case of me not believing that, but I just, it was on Xbox 360 and stuff, and I never quite went, went back to it. And then having actually gone through that, I completely agree with like the really high opinions about that game. It was it was absolutely incredible. I will make it too. I haven't started yet, but once I get through this terrible Call of Duty Modern Warfare, three campaign <laughs> i'm gonna go on to alan wake 2 that's also why i'm not including modern warfare 3 that game shouldn't ha have happened it wasn't technically supposed to it's sort of modern warfare 2 dlc i'm not going to get into all the reasons why because we'll be here for another hour but uh <laughs> that game was a mistake and i don't know what one i know why activision wanted to make it money um but well, they yes. weren't they weren't supposed to and the fact that they gave that game to sledgehammer and it's not sledgehammer's fault for what that the state that game's in but modern warfare is infinity award series and it, it just didn't go well lies of p lies of p is one of them sort of souls borny sort of games and some of you might be thinking oh those games where i die 500 times this is by far the most approachable of them and even i myself have got almost halfway through that game but i'm gonna really take my time getting the rest through the rest of it and even though i haven't finished it it'll be criminal if I didn't put it on the list or if we didn't include it on the list. It's a really, really incredible game. It's sort of a Pinocchio story because you kind of sort yes. of play as Pinocchio, but it, this sort of the world's gone bad. There was a puppet frenzy where the puppets have like done a zombie thing where they've taken over the world and you have to fix it. But that's, that's such a good game. Forspoken uh, really didn't get the love it deserved and it got really butchered by a lot of people. But I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed that game and I really loved it. And when I finished that at the time, what month was that? It was earlier in the year. That was my game of the year at the time. I really, really enjoyed that. Final Fantasy 16, I know what happens in the story, but I didn't completely finish the game, but it is a really, really fantastic game. I would personally go with Dead Space. I have a feeling Baldur's Gate 3 might win because that got like... Yeah. high high critically critical acclaim although you could say the same thing about resident evil 4 and zelda the things with this game for th this year for games is like zelda comes out oh that's the game of the year resident evil 4 comes out that's now the game of the year and then like every single new great game that came out through the calendar year was like this one's the game of the year then the next one is yeah, uh, which I mean, is, which it, is a very good time for the year. So, I, well, yeah, I mean, you know, when you've got something for all its faults as big as Starfield, plus Spider Man 2, plus Hogwarts Legacy, plus Star Wars Jedi Survivor, plus Baldur's Gate 3, plus New Legends of Zelda, a new Alan Wake game, and another Final Fantasy game. I mean, it's been a ridiculous a year yeah. for, for, for huge, huge IPs this year. So, I suspect Baldur's Gate may be the thing that takes it, but although Spider Man 2, I mean, because it's Spider-Man may be up there, but there may be a lot of people that haven't played it because of the fact that it is PS5 only. Mm. Um, Hogwarts not, Legacy may get some love, although it has been out for a long time. So I, I don't know. See, although what you're saying with Spider-Man is true because it's only on PS5, it did sell a lot of copies. I think well, it's PlayStation's yes. fastest ever selling game or something. So I get what you mean, but it uh, did sell a lot of copies. But yeah. um, I think Baldur's Gate 3 will take it. I'm kind of with you on that. That, that seems to be the, the thing that's getting the most love at the moment but we'll we'll see we'll see certainly those mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's going to be a strong list this year introducing Greyback into it we have uh, movie <laughs> of the year so we have um, Barbie obviously Oppenheimer obviously The Marvels Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 still a Michael J. Fox movie John Wick Chapter 4 Dungeons and Dragons Old Number of Thieves Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 Blue Beetle The Flash Indiana Jones and the Dial of Death Destiny, Elemental, Gran Turismo, Mario, No One Will Save You, The Little Mermaid, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Mutant Mayhem, No Hard Feelings, and Five Nights at Freddy's. 
Gray. I wonder if this is almost a done deal and we should just have Barbie in the list. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, yeah. Potentially, just a, such a fantastic movie. There were some great movies, I think, for us as geeks who listen and watch. There are some things on there that just did things really well. I know I haven't watched the Mario movie, but I've heard amazing things about it. Oppenheimer, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, all fantastic. But let's be honest, Barbie was a phenomenon. And if you could do a joint marketing campaign award as well Barbie and Oppenheimer probably take that <laughs> yeah. um, so I, I'm going to go for that I'm off to see Marvels for the second time tomorrow if anyone's listening to this and is not wanting to go because they're seeing lots of negative press just ignore that people who want to make loads of comments about the money they take being the value of the movie ignore that like go and watch it go and make your own mind up don't just read news reports it's a really good handling of that storyline and yes it hasn't made loads of money but we are getting to a fatigue with the MCU so if you're a hardcore fan, go and see it and, you know, you'll enjoy it. And um, yeah, so Barbie for me. What about you, Matt? Well, Grace seems to think it's really clear that it's Barbie. Uh, I think Spider-Man across the Spider-Verse got a really, really good <laughs> chance. That's what I would both want to. And I think it will win. I think Barbie's got definitely a very good chance. I think that was the highest grossing film of the year. It was either that or, or Mario. They both made a lot of money. Um, I did a few things here. I did a bit of a film catch up over the weekend and I did see Barbie. I saw Blue beetle i saw tmnt mutant mayhem and no hard feelings just to get caught up on a few things in terms of the ones that i added i added them kind of more so as options and some of them were ones that people talked about a fair bit i also added like a couple of underdog films so things like normal will save you just ones that even though i think are really good there's a couple of ones in there that like, like gran turismo as well that were really really good but aren't talked about as much but i thought i'd put them in there as options a man called Otto, which that was a really really great film and i so i took my mum to see that for a birthday i thought oh it's a, we both like tom hanks and toy story and all that and he's he's in this film and i thought oh it'll be a nice little you know casual film and it was like really hard hitting and deep and really like just amazing so it surprised me in a really really good way Gran Turismo was, was quite good, used the video game thing quite well. Uh, I'm surprised not, neither of you put Mario on here because I kind of looked at the list and I was like, oh, Mario's not on it yet. So I thought I'd I'd add that in. And there are a few others I added just as kind of options as well. Yeah, I may knock a few of these out because it's going to make that list really, really huge. Um, yeah. You did mark a couple of remo- removals, Grey. So Blue Beetle. Yeah, and just Indiana they got Jones. such critical reviews that, you know, if we're thinking about the film of the year or the film that we all talk about I think we have a good argument that Blue Beetle not great, um, Indiana Jones, mixed reviews but on the whole is it as good as some of the other ones we've got up there, if I was being, being really harsh I, I'd potentially you know take out the flash as well but you know I like some of that as well but I know you've got to cut it down, if you're cutting it down, go and get rid of the Blue Beetle the flash and Indiana Jones wouldn't be a bad thing in my eyes and I don't think the Geek Town fans would, would bat an eyelid that those would be missing Yeah I mean I have mixed feelings about Blue Beetle because I actually think it did a it did a pretty decent job I- in terms of it. The Flash was probably a, a better. F- I don't know. It, I, I'm, I'm struggling with those two. I actually, I mean, I, as a new hero, yeah. I actually think they did a really good job. And Indiana Jones got a lot of criticism, but I actually really like that movie, and I think it's a really good ending for him. So and that I would potentially leave in. I think um, the, the problem with the Flash is the Flash is both of their story in that film was the worst part of the film, but then everything else around it was actually quite good. So it was like you made a you made a film that was pretty good but the main two characters if you call them that are the worst part of their film and it's called The Flash so it was I don't know it, it was an odd odd film but at least it finally got released after 10 years after the TV show ran its entire run yes <laughs> so yes that is true it came out yeah did you both like Blue Beetle I enjoyed Blue Beetle I, I liked it I haven't it. It seen the fun. full movie no, no okay. I, I, I watched it that was one I caught over the weekend and I thought it was quite fun I thought it had a lot of heart it's just it's the disappointing that although they because he's I think James Gunner said like the character coming over but the film isn't going to be canon yeah. so it's like okay what, what the, does that mean you get some memory wipe <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, nothing I, in the film happened I don't yeah. know. But, I, I um, don't know. I don't know how that that's gonna that's gonna come across. But yeah, that's all the things on the long list that will probably get trimmed down a bit. But we'll we'll see what comes out when it goes up on the website. So last few categories we have most anticipated new TV series of 2024. We've got Three Body Problem on Netflix. 
Agatha Darkhold Diaries on Disney Plus, Echo on Disney Plus, Fallout on Prime Video, Ironheart on Disney Plus, Masters of the Air on Apple TV, Orphan Black Echoes on ITV X, Star Wars Skeleton Crew on Disney Plus, Mayfair Witches on the BBC, then Walking Dead Dead City, Daryl Dixon and the Ones Who Live. None of those have got UK broadcasters at the moment, but they have been out in the US. So I think they're anticipated for us, certainly, probably for me and Matt, if nobody else. And um, <laughs> Ray, you added Mr. and Mrs. Smith, the Prime Video series, and X Men 97, which is the animated series coming to Disney Plus as well. So uh, start with you, Gray. I think out of all of those, I'm definitely looking forward to Agatha Darkhold Diaries. Um, and I put Mr. and Mrs. Smith and X Men 97. I think Mr. and Mrs. Smith are fascinated by that was originally Phoebe Waller Bridge, and obviously she dropped out of the project. And I, I, I always really liked the film with Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt. So that's what's fascinating me. And just a huge fan of X-Men and the X-Men 97 sort of having this reboot but technically is coming through as a new series with some new character designs or character designs a little bit more loyal to the comic books I'm really interested to see where that goes so um, those would be my calls for the best uh, new TV shows What about you Matt? Well I would say Walking Dead but the thing and the one, ones who live the Rick and Michonne show I would say that but we don't actually know a ton about it yet so uh, in terms of my actual excitement level for it it'd be great to see the two characters back and hopefully it reunites them with some other characters but we just don't know much about it yet that echo trailer though from a couple of weeks ago was absolutely outstanding and i'm very glad that they're trying to do something different literally from the writing as well they're trying to do something different tonally and including certain other characters in that show that are also going to be in there i think it's a very very good idea and in terms of how that could tie into other stuff that's coming out as well because there was a lot of consensus of like oh echo was cool in hawkeye but do we need a show for her and and I, I was kind of always, once we'd seen her in the show, I was like, okay, I'll be curious to see more of her. But then we got the trailer and it kind of, it kicked things on a lot more because that's what we kind of need for the Rick and Michonne show is a trailer to show, okay, what actually is the show and what they're going to be you know doing and yeah. stuff. So I'm, I'm looking forward to those. Um, Ironheart, I'm really looking forward to. I liked her introduction in uh, Black Panther. I think it's been delayed a little bit, but it might be out next year. I'm mostly looking forward to Echo from this list. I'm looking forward to Echo. I'm looking forward to Ironheart and Agatha as well. I think out of everything though, Fallout is the thing that really stands for me just because I loved the mm. video games and I think it's such an interesting world and it's Lisa Joy and Jonathan Nolan that are producing it I really want to see what they do with that and whether they manage to pull it off so I think in terms of anticipation that is probably the one that I'm most looking forward to seeing and again we've not we don't know much about it at the moment that's certainly a world that I'm looking forward to diving into I think Walking Dead promotion department really letting the whole franchise down at the well, moment. I, I, I think yeah. I MC are letting Walking Dead down just generally yeah. at the moment because the fact that you've got three spin-offs and none of them have a UK broadcaster even though two of them have already aired in the US is ridiculous at this point. Yeah. Next, we move on to most anticipated game of 2024. We've got, uh, I, I mean, we don't 100% know that these will all land, and this is always the problem with these sort of games. So mm -hmm. uh, Dragon Age Dreadwolf may potentially land next year. Suicide Squad killed the Justice League. I think we do know that is lending next year. Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2, which has been on the list, I think, three times at this point, but that is something that I am looking forward to still. Star Wars Outlaws, which I think is definitely for next year. Final Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth, Avowed, Persona 3 Reloaded, Like a Dragon, Infinite Wealth, Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown, The Wolf Among Us 2, and Alone in the Dark is the list there. I'm a little bit torn because there are some big RPG games such as Vampire the Masquerade, Bloodlines. Uh, the idea of a big open world Star Wars game, though, hugely appeals to me with Outlaws. And particularly as it's not like Jedi things, it's more kind of background stuff. So mm -hmm. yeah, that, yeah. that really, really appeals to me. But a new Dragon Age game as well I, is hugely appealing to me. So I think those are the three that I'm, I'm really kind of behind. <laughs> Mind. Oh, what about you? I think either Final Fantasy VII or Like a Dragon, Infinite Wealth, I'd rather lose to a win, mainly because the fan base 
basis for those get very very excited when uh, whenever anything for those come out. I, I, the only thing I know about the um, like a dragon stuff is you've got Rosie from uh, PlayStation Access, and she's the one that kind of covers the games over there. And her, along with you know that sort of fan base, is let's just say very 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 excited for all those <laughs> games. They've had quite a few of those games recently, but that's another one that they're looking forward to. Uh, Final Fantasy's always got a strong fan base, and they're really looking forward to the next part of that. I'm curious about Star Wars Outlaws, but I think it needs it just needs to be better than Jedi Survivor for me. I know it's a, a, a different situation, but I, I would like that game to be very good. I think they've got like a GTA Wanted style thing in there as well, where you can get like the authority after you or something. So that, that, yeah. that could be quite a cool mechanic. No, I think that Final Fantasy will win this. You might be wondering why GTA 6 isn't in there. I, I've not put it in because we have no idea when it's going to be yeah released and i would be surprised if they drop the trailer in december which is when they are supposed to be dropping the trailer and say it'll be out next year i i yeah, that's fair, that's fair. I, i'm so yeah. so i've not put it in plus it would walk away with it of course it would if we put it in the category as well so i'm sort of leaving it off for the moment because we don't have a set release date and i rather suspect it might be 2025 rather than 2024 so uh, i've left it off for now most anticipated movie of 2024 we have june part two ghostbusters frozen empire godzilla versus kong the new empire the fall guy eurosia which is the uh, mad max fury road prequel kingdom of the planet of the apes bad boys for Inside Out 2, Quiet Place Day 1, Despicable Me 4, Deadpool 3, Borderlands, Craven the Hunter, Beetlejuice 2, The Joker 2 Movie, Venom 3, Gladiator 2, Wicked Part 1, Sonic the Hedgehog 3, Paddington in Peru, Rebel Move Part 1, and Chicken Run 2. Two. So, Gray, what are you going for? I would be very much looking forward to Deadpool 3 because of what they're potentially doing with the cinematic universe um, and sort of pulling a little bit more in. And now a lot more has happened. I think Ryan Reynolds um, is going to sort of bring that together a little bit more. I'm also really excited about Paddington Peru. I'm going off for a tour of the Paddington set in January. Well, Paddington set, some of the locations Paddington was filmed. So I'm quite excited about that as well. Um, and I'm loving all the promo and the trader stuff for the full guy as well. That looks really interesting to go and watch. Yeah. What about you, Matt? I remember when that first Chicken Run 2 trailer came out and it was just delightful to have those characters back. I recently saw the first one again for one of my classic reviews episodes. So I'm really looking forward to seeing that come back. That's on Netflix. Rebel Moon I'm really looking forward to as well. The only thing I'm disappointed about in Rebel Moon is that it's going to be on Netflix and I would like to see something as grand and as big on the big screen. I also hope that Netflix takes care of it. Uh, yes. Because if you, if you, I think if you take care properly or something like that that's been quoted as kind of the new Star Wars, which it does look very Star Wars-y, so it's got potential. You need somebody who's going to take care of it. So I just hope that Netflix does that. We've gotten to that point with them. But I'm very excited to see Zack, Zack Snyder come back. He should be making DC films, but that's a different topic for a different time. Yes. Um, of course, I would be. It would be criminal of me not to mention, of course, my lovely Pixar, uh, and they're coming out with Inside Out Two. Say whatever you'd like about Pixar, but I think Inside Out Two, possibly a three, possibly a four. There's so much potential of what you could do with Inside Out Two, and as the main cat, I think her name is Riley. As she gets older, because I think she's going to be like a young teenager, then you could do older teenager, then you could do adult, and there's no real limit as to like how old the character has to be to do those films yeah. because it's all about emotions and obviously your emotions will change as you get older so that's just got a ton of absolute ton of potential and I really really enjoyed the first one I mean I trust Pixar to do anything anyway so looking forward to having a quiet place back and this is going to be sort of a where it began kind of thing I don't know how much of this is going to include the original characters but the, yeah, no, the, as the far premise, as I can tell but yeah right um, but I think the whole idea of the premise is like how this all started in the mystery of that so I'm really excited for that I think there's a 3 coming out as well but they're doing this prequel which is very good Deadpool 3 uh, has got I'm not going to get into spoiler territory stuff but it's got a ton of potential given what we could see in that film I think Gray might know a thing or two of what I'm talking about um, 
but that could be very, very good. And in terms of this whole Venom 3, Craven stuff, I, I don't think I'm bothered about this Sony yeah. Venom bursting anymore. So I, I did watch the Madden Web trailer the other day, although that's, that's not out next year, is it? So, yeah. Um, but plenty to look forward to in that list. Plenty to look forward to. What is The Fall Guy? Is that The Fall that? Guy starts Ryan Gosling. It's based on a classic 80s TV show, which I absolutely loved. Um, and it's okay. Ryan Gosling and Emily Blunt in the lead role of it. And it's uh, the TV show starred Lee Majors. And it's a, it's a big screen remake of that. And it's about a, a some stunt performers who sort of go on to become kind of bounty hunters. So they're, they're nice. sort of doing stunt performers. I, I mean, I was hoping they were going to do a TV remake of it, but they've gone down the movie route, which, uh, I mean, sort of makes sense because it means you can do huge over-the-top stunts and explosions and things. So I sort of get it. But uh, it's got a great cast. It's got Hannah Waddington in it as well oh, and cool. uh, Lee Majors apparently does make an appearance in it which I'm very very happy about but I love that TV show so much so the fact that there is a big screen kind of movie version of it I'm I'm over the moon about that and I like Ryan Gosling as well and I love Emily Blunt so it's got a mm-hmm. good cast so my personal most anticipated is Inside Out 2 I would like to see Deadpool 3 win this because I think that film has got a lot that it could yeah. do and I think that's very exciting so yeah Deadpool 3, certainly it would be up there for me. Inside Out, I'm very much with you as well. Inside Out, I think, is one of the best movies Pixar have made. And uh, just the amount of depth in that film is incredible. And uh, I also have a lot of love for Ghostbusters and Frozen Empire. I know you weren't as much of a fan of the uh, latest movie, but I... Really enjoyed that. So, so, yeah. So, I'm looking forward to that. There's some great stuff coming out next year. That's our list. As I say, some of the things might disappear before it goes up on the website. We might decide to trim things down a little bit more before it goes up, but it will be open by the time this podcast goes out so all you need to do is go to geektown.co.uk forward slash awards you can go and see the prizes you can go and enter just pick your favorite stuff out of the categories fill out some details that's all you have to do to be able to be eligible to enter you'll go into the draw and you will get a phone call from me at some point between christmas and new year saying whether you won or not if you win the prize so uh, that's basically it but uh, geektown.co.uk forward slash awards for that that's the show for this week uh, sorry it's been quite a long one but we will be back with a normal show next week as well if you want to find Grey you can go and find him on Twitter at Grey the Geek if you want to find Matt you can go and find him over on Entertainment Talk or at eTalk UK at uh, lots of various social media places as well and uh, for us if you want to find us you can of course go to the website at geektown.co.uk you can find us across social media either at Geek Town or at Geek Town UK. Go and look us up on there as well. That is everything. We shall see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye.